Trace Jackson Davis has proven to be a definitive draft robbery, a pick number 57 in 2023's NBA draft, making organizations regret not taking a chance on him. As mentioned in a Warrior video from a little while back from your boy, Trace is the best big man prospect outside of Victor Wembenyama from last year's draft class. After what he did against Victor, as well as against Giannis a few games prior, the rookie's more than making teams regret nearly letting him go undrafted. Jackson Davis could be a steal for the ages by rookie GM Mike Dunleavy for the Warriors as a whole since we last left this channel's Golden State series after a victory against D-Flo's hometown Raptors, with Stephen Curry getting injured, plus a lot more drama unfolding in this roller coaster dubs campaign. How Golden State rebounded in the Alamo City will be covered after we evaluate the beastliness from TJD. But just 12.1% of my channel's audience is subscribed, so if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button as it'd be greatly appreciated. As the story goes, after being passed on 56 times in 2023's NBA draft, Golden State Warriors 57th overall draft pick Trace Jackson Davis would tweet out, Y'all will regret this, I promise you. Keeping his promise in an incredible manner, the 21.11 rebound, three block per game senior out of Indiana University is finally getting stable minutes in Steve Kerr's rotation, and with those minutes, TJD is starting to feast on the league's premier talent. Jackson Davis's elite lateral footwork keep him in the vicinity on this play before he times up his standing jump to the release of Giannis's layup, in turn swatting it. But after Giannis gathers his own swatted miss, Trace's block accuracy gifted from his hand-eye coordination allow him to monstrously stay within rejected Dedekumpo for a second straight time. Better yet, on the very next offensive possession for Golden State, Trace then proceeds to turn defense into offense by converting a Stephen Curry lob from the dunker spot. Kaminga blindsides Giannis on this attack with his one-on-one -on -one D, distracting Giannis from Jackson Davis's backside help. Also, to keep himself out of Adetokounmpo's rear view, notice how TJD leaves the slightest bit of room between he and Giannis, a mechanism that attempts and succeeds at baiting Adetokounmpo into attacking. In an instant, Trace then shuts the door with his mix of springiness and wingspan to obliterate a Giannis field goal attempt for a third time in under two minutes, at will. And identically to his last block on Giannis, Trace's 99 overall stamina leads to an immediate dunk on the other end. I mean, just a damn special couple of sequences. As you've heard from your boy d on this channel all year with Trace, this isn't just any other rookie we're talking about here. It was clear Jackson Davis was slept on from day one, way back in the summer league. In terms of in March, where he's averaged double-figure scoring, in limited minutes, Trace, especially over the Warriors' last two wins in particular, is putting up monstrous numbers, which goes to show you that no matter what his PT is on any given night, the 24-year-old rook is taking advantage of every little opportunity given to him, which is a requirement for any first-year player in the NBA or any player looking to earn their keep or prove a point in general for that matter. Shifting to Trace's showing in the most recent Warrior W, where the rookie sensation up front being beautifully trusted by both the Dubs coaching staff and this veteran Warrior personnel, as I've preached for all season, was also heavily influential against the Spurs. In a matchup with a man selected 56 picks earlier than him last summer, it was time for Trace to make people officially regret passing on it. This right here with two screeners on opposite sides of the ball handler is known as a horn screen, with Trace being one of those pick setters and opening up his scoring on the night by skirting past Wemby's drop to catch and finish the lob from Chris Paul. On the other side, watch TJD neutralize Wembenyama in the post before making this a fully contested Victor layup. In semi-transition, he's going to clean up this hey, Wiggins. miss by putting back the two-handed boom shakalaka. Given what happened down the line, this next TJD dunk will get lost in the shuffle. However, this same DHO keep action that Draymond Green has been using for years gets Trace a drive where he takes off and doesn't get the elevation like we're about to see against Wemby, but seems to hang in the air forever on this poster against Sohan as the bunnies are ridiculous. Watch this multi-effort defensive stance where he locks down the Trey Jones drive as the low man, accounts for Jeremy Sohan with a hard stunt to force the pass to Collins, dashes back to Collins who dishes back to Sohan and gets right over to intimidate the layup, which forces two misses before he snags the board. Beastly, beastly stuff, y'all. In the low post, Trace is going to crowd Collins with an all-NBA defender-type contest around the basket, 
and GMs plus scouts. I want you to note how the former four-year NCAA product has been taught to secure possessions by grabbing the board after making a defensive effort. Not too many one and dones do that consistently. For the four-year college product in Trace, however, it's an ingrained skill. You know, like nunchuck skills, bow hunting skills. In Draymond's role like before, but this time as the split action facilitator, Trace finds hey, Wiggins. with a savvy bouncer for the triple. This double drag screen action sees Trey show off his seamless vertical off a crisp lob, timely drawn up play from Kerr, who made some excellent rotations in this one by the way, not to mention looked more locked in than usual on the bench. There was something different about him. This next play for a third time in this video behind the quarterbacking of Chris Paul sees the CP3 TJD tandem go to work, as the feel for one another and timing developed between this veteran rookie connection makes it a one-two punch that can be consistently turned to off the bench and one that should be effective when do or die games hit. Watch the awareness TJD displays to guard this pick and roll with outstanding drop coverage. He rotates to deny the ball handler in Trey Jones drive, then casually gets back to swat the roll man in Collins attempt. Jackson Davis going to work with old school scrappiness is the most watchable basketball on television aka crack streams right now. Please Kerr, can he have a tad bit more playing time? Back to the other side though, where it's an isolation on Wemben Yama that stole the show. As Victor initially does a great job of staying with this half spin by somewhat knocking it loose, then aggressively trails Trace and winds up for the block, leading to this. Jackson Davis oh, the this was, I'm not going to lie to you, shocking to watch as it happened, but how Trace elusively gained leverage to shock Wemby for this poster shows you how much vertical this man really has. Trace is so comfortable in how high he can elevate that he's able to calmly stride into his takeoff, which can get potential shot blockers overconfident about their chances at succeeding. In addition to his elusive strides, how Trace winded back for this jam off the dribble, while with his mere 7-2 wingspan and 8-10 standing reach, clearing all 8 feet of Victor's wingspan and all 10 feet of Wemby's standing reach, shows you how much ground Jackson Davis's vertical jump can account for, and it makes for some straight eye candy. For making him a warrior in the first place, credit to Mike Dunleavy for being absolutely on the money in his first year as an executive, as the most insane part of this video is that while Trace may go down as an all-time draft steal, he's probably not even the biggest draft steal in his own draft class, let alone on his own team. That could very well be the Warriors' 19th pick from last summer, being the team leader in plus minus, and the NBA's leader in charges drawn, Brandon Pajemski, another Mike Dunleavy robbery that, on top of Jonathan Kaminga's steady progression into an all-star caliber talent, blesses the Warriors with an extremely promising future. Strictly regarding this season, and it's unfortunate that just as the Dubs had gotten fully healthy for the first time since November, Stephen Curry turned his ankle against Chicago and has missed the last two games, with the MRI revealing no structural damage, but with still no solid timetable for Stephen's return. On top of that bad luck, Gary Payton II missed the outing at Chase Center against the Spurs, which the Warriors were upset in by a Spurs team without Wemby. With Curry still out, GP2 returned in the W, again against the Spurs, but this time in San Antonio. The second Second half of a home and home saw the Warriors get back on track. However, the two L's to the under 500 Bulls and Spurs, with the former featuring Curry getting hurt, were very tough pills to swallow. And not only because of the devastation of Stefan's injury, they were also rough L's given the playoff race the Dubs are in. Plus, in the game before those L's, following a feel-good W against the much better than Bulls and Spurs second-seeded Bucks, that bounce back versus a red-hot Milwaukee team that the Dubs pulled off to get back from a blowout L to the first-seeded Celtics. Was erased. It's been a roller coaster, whatever you want to say. But with all of that said, as opposed to the Bucks' victory, while their most recent win in San Antonio wasn't the most convincing against a Spurs team that you should be all over, you can't dismiss the fact that it was firstly still a win without your best player in Curry, plus Wemby was back for the Spurs as opposed to win the first of the home and home. More notably, Dub Nation has to be thankful that even after going through a stretch of losing three games out of four, their team not only holds a comfortable lead for the play-in spot, but still have the most amount of wins among all 30 teams from January 30th dating up until today. And don't forget, with 18 outings to spare, I know it's becoming increasingly unlikely with Steph's injury in addition to a small chunk of the season being left, but the Warriors still sit within four games of securing a non-play-in tournament official playoff seed. 
Obviously, going through the play-in is the most likely timeline for the dubs, but on the bright side, if that happens, you know Curry would be out for revenge after losing to LeBron in the 2021 play-in tournament, plus Miami in 2023 is a perfect example of how much life a play-in tournament team still has. But as we know, if this Golden State team just protects a few more massive leads, its record would be completely different. Factoring that last point into play, then considering the heftily unmatched championship experience from Curry, Green, and Thompson, and this makes Golden State an utterly terrifying sleeper team this season. That's a story for another day. But in terms of TJD, does he have a player comparison to a former star slash role player? And if so, who? Best answer gets next video's comment or shout out while getting up on this board right here, with the shout out winner in my next video potentially being one of five in position to win either a free jersey or shoe. Today's shout out goes to JR Mason, who says regarding Barkley's criticism of Doncic, Chuck probably doesn't realize that since the trade, while Luka's scoring has stayed consistent, his assists have been steadily rising. He may end up averaging double digit assists on the season. And JR, for that reason and for many others, Chuck was utterly out of line with that take on Luca from my last video. Appreciate the take from JR Mason and every other. Keep leaving your takes for a chance at free merch. This was your boy D Flow, and I'll see you next video.